teaching teacher invitation so uh, my view is that the basic premise is rooted in, in a statement called non-duality which is a negation it's a not to so there's no way you can teach non-duality so I don't believe there's any non-duality teachers all you can do is teach about duality yeah the primary duality which is subject object you as the subject and everything else as an object to you and then that being geometrically progressed into manifestation of yes and no high and low male female everything split uh, you can sort of teach about that and what the teach all the teaching about that would distill to into is you're not that yeah you're not that and in in that I I believe that's the invitation yeah so you can speak quite a lot about what we're not but you can't speak about what we are because we're living what we are it can't be caught and put on the glass because there would be some there would have to be something else that caught it and put it on the glass yes so a river is never gonna let's say uh, investigate its river it's it's a river it's a verb it's happening yes it's never going to stop and get on the shore and then look at itself and say, oh, that's what a river is. It's just happening. Well, that's the same feeling I have about this. So as an inviter or a mailman, it's just almost like a role of being a catalyst. You just offer an invitation for the mind to entertain that maybe in the way it's structured now, in self-centeredness, seemingly structured, it can't reach out of that and entertain it. So we're bringing it into it, yeah? From an outside situation called, in some circles it would call, be called satsang, company of truth, but just a meeting. And in that meeting, we're putting out an invitation for the mind to entertain. Yeah? We're sort of like dropping it into the mail slot. So in a sense, that's how I feel about being a mailman. Now the envelope is conceptual because the mail slot where we are right now is conceptual. We're going through the conditional mind in a way with the hopes that when the conditional mind opens it and sees inside that that's nothing, that it will leave that nothing alone. And that nothing alone is the message, yeah? That nothing is what incites the mind because the mind is no thingness. So in having a message of no thingness or nothing, it incites the mind to, to sort of engage in and as its own nature, which is no thingness, instead of attempting to engage with this nature of no thingness as a thing. Yeah? I don't see, I don't see uh, that working well, to forget no thingness, take yourself to be a thing, and then as a thing try to get to no thingness doesn't work for me. It's questioning the thingness. If I'm, not, if, if, if I'm not a thing, then perhaps, and it's not like there's a you that will say, then I'm a no thing, maybe I'll discover what it's like to be no thing, yeah? if I'm not a thing. So I'm, uh, that's just the way I see it. I don't see how you can, like I talked about last night at this meeting, how you can get from two to one. It's just about realizing you're not a two, yeah? and that's one. That's my take on it. So I don't like the name of, of a teacher. Because that also implies students. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't uh, like that dy dynamic that much because it's got too much juice around it, teacher-student. It almost seems to separate and one gets raised above the other. That's not, that's not true for me. So it's just a male, male, man or an inviter. Not advita, inviter. You know I mean? I'm inviting you to entertain a possibility. Yes, the possibility is inherent in you. We're not bringing it from outside and bringing you the possibility. We're trying to drop a little like clue or a little like, hey, you know, like a whispering, so that the mind can entertain because the possibility is of mind. 